A massive media presence outside the home of Lance Armstrong, the disgraced cyclist, apologized today to the charity he founded for the scandal surrounding him. That was ahead of an interview with Oprah Winfrey in which Armstrong was expected to confess to the doping that cost him his seven Tour de France title. Let's get more with CNN senior legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin, as well as Sports Illustrated senior writer David Epstein in New York. And we'll also, we're also joined by Victor Conti in San Francisco. Conti says he, suppl he supplied Barry Bonds, Marion Jones, boxer Shane Mosley, and other athletes with performance-enhancing drugs. And full disclosure, he did serve four months in prison. First, David, welcome to all of you, by the way. First to you, um, though, David, there's a lot going on right now in terms of this interview that Lance Armstrong has done, is doing with Oprah Winfrey. Have you learned anything about what's ha what went on in this interview so far? Well, I, I want to be kind of cautious because I, I don't know that anybody except the people who are there that knows for sure, but the indications I've heard is that uh, you know, he, he will uh, confess to a degree, but it will be very limited uh, in terms of details. Now, confess to a degree, what, do you, what does that mean to you? Uh, to me, that means that there won't be sort of specific, probably won't be sort of specific apologies to people and not sort of specific details about how things were done, um, you know, or going point by point through the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency report, but sort of a more blanket uh, discussion or confession. Now, let's but look back a bit. I mean, we've, there's such a long string of, ev of evidence or just comments um, about doping and Lance Armstrong that has really spanned years. We want to play you something that Lance Armstrong said about doping allegations. This was back in 2004. Listen to this. We've sort of reached a point where we, we, we really can't tolerate it anymore. And we're sick and tired of these allegations. And we're going to do everything we can uh, to fight them. They're absolutely untrue. Uh, we filed action in England, we filed action in France uh, against everybody involved, and enough is enough. Enough is enough. I mean, he didn't j only deny the allegations. I mean, he fought back, David. Does that make it the apology, if it does come now, um, all the harder to accept? I think for a lot of people it will. And look, when he had a chance to really fight, when he could have pursued the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency's arbitration process to really clear himself, he decided not to partake in that process. So that's, that's the opposite of fighting. That's like equivalent to pleading no contest. So there's that. And then there are a lot of people uh, who were sort of harmed in his wake. And I think a lot of those people feel like they deserve personal apologies, not even just his confession. Now, Jeff Tubin, I want to talk a little bit about the potential legal implications here. And we'd like to start by just playing a chunk of tape from Lance Armstrong's 2005 deposition. Listen. Uh, you have never taken any performance enhancing drug in connection with your cycling career. Correct. Uh, and that would include any substance that's ever been banned. Is that fair to say? Correct. Now, there's another part that we don't have on tape, but we do have in, in transcript form, and I just want to read you some of that. Uh, this is some of the questioning of Lance Armstrong, the question. You understand that although we're in the conference room of your lawyers. You're giving testimony as if you're in a court of law. Do you understand that? Armstrong, correct. Question. And that penalties of perjury attached to this deposition just like they would in a court of law proceeding. Armstrong, of course. So in the event that Armstrong has actually made certain admissions relating to his alleged use of performing, uh, using performing enhancing drugs, do you think uh, he has a perjury problem here? No. For a very simple reason. Look at the date, 2005. That was pushing eight years ago. The statute of limitations for perjury in Texas is three years. So he is completely safe uh, from a perjury prosecution. The whole matter of civil litigation, very different. But for a criminal case, I don't see how that could be the basis of one. So it, by civil litigation, you mean he could be sued? Correct. And he already has been sued. Uh, by the London Times. You heard that when, in that piece of tape we just played that he had sued uh, the London Times for making an allegation about performance enhancing drugs. He actually uh, received a substantial settlement from the London Times and now the paper is suing to get that settlement back. Um, there, there have been a number of possible lawsuits already discussed. For example, the, the Tour de France price, 
prize money, which is over $3 million. They are considering legal action to get that back because he is apparently, and again, we don't know precisely what he's saying, he's acknowledging that he uh, won the Tour de France while using prohibited drugs, which would be a fraud entitling perhaps a civil action against him. And Victor, I want to bring you in on all of this and get your take on how all of this is going down as well as what we expect could possibly, whatever kind of uh, caveat we need to put, an, ap an apology or an admission that, from Lance Armstrong. But first, I want to play you another part of that deposition we're talking about. It's so interesting. This back from November 30th, 2005. You've never... Um used your own blood for doping purposes, for example. Absolutely. That, that would be banned. Okay. I, I'm not trying to agitate you. I'm just trying to make sure your testimony is clear. Okay. Okay. So you have been on, in on the inside knowing more about this, really, than, than most, most anyone in, in, in terms of performance enhancing drugs and supplying them to star athletes. What do you make of all of this and how he went about it? So many people call it the most sophisticated uh, doping operation that they've ever seen. Or well, allegedly. it was a very sophisticated program uh, in the USADA report uh, on pages 129 through 139. It's almost a blueprint uh, as to how you circumvent uh, the anti-doping policies and procedures in place. I would like to say I'm very glad to hear the discussion about these people that have been bullied and sued. Um, I don't know what's worse, the, the cheating. Uh, I was very much involved with this and I decided early on that the best thing to do was to step up and tell the truth and to do it for all the right reasons. Uh, as a result, Two lawsuits were filed against me, one by Marion Jones in the amount of $25 million and the other by boxer Shane Mosley in the amount of $12 million. These were simply fraudulent lawsuits. They, they lied in their declarations that were filed. Uh, thereafter, uh, when confronted, of course, I prevailed in both of these cases. But I do understand these people, the support team members, as an example, around Lance Armstrong, and how they feel they didn't have the resources to defend themselves against someone like a Lance Armstrong. I also feel that there's an accountability by the legal advisors that he has. My opinion is they knew full well that he was using performance enhancing drugs and they knew that he was committing fraud when he filed these declarations as a part of these lawsuits. So I don't know what's more damaging. Is it the the fact that he used the drugs in, in competing against other athletes or the cover-up and the damage that he call, caused to all those people uh, thereafter. So when you look at all of that and you see where we are today with the, the, with the possibility that he will be admitting um, doping, do you think he can redeem himself? Listen, the longer that you lie and you carry on like this, as an example, Marion Jones, she lied for about an eight-year period, filed lawsuit against me, and everybody remembers her on the courthouse steps crying and weeping. And when I looked at Marion, I saw her children, and I saw her mother, and I realized they didn't lie, they didn't cheat, they didn't do anything wrong, yet they suffered yeah. tremendously. I didn't think it through. I'm not so sure Lance Armstrong has thought this all through. Uh, it wasn't until I got into a prison camp and my family members came to visit me and I looked in their eyes and I saw the pain mm -hmm. and suffering that I had caused to them when I realized how reckless that I had been in making that decision to, to join this, this uh, culture of, of PED use in sports. And uh, it was a mistake. It was wrong. It was all wrong for me. And, and David Epstein, that question we hear again and again, why should people care about athletes using performance enhancing drugs when there are many people who say we glorify athletes too much when we should be glorifying say scientists or academics well it's a complicated question it sort of depends where you want to start from but at its basis if you care about sports I think there's hardly anything in the entire universe that's more dependent upon agreed upon rules for its basic values than sports so if you care about sports that's one issue there's the other issue of doing things that are against United States law um, or the other of uh, whether ends justify the means. And so I think there are a, a lot of angles and people aren't required to care. Uh, but I think if you care about athletes following US law like other people do and um, respecting sort of 
the, the very basic building blocks of what we think is valuable in sports, then it's probably something that you care about to a degree. And when you watch how this thing, I mean, how, how many years there have been these allegations and, and, and where this whole story has come to today, so many people are asking, myself included, why now? Why would he admit it now, David? Is it he's hit rock bottom or is there something else? I mean, there's no other choice. So I think the strategy in the retrospect, it looks like deny as long as you absolutely possibly can. Um, and then maybe there's something, there's, there's nothing else to be really gained from denying anymore. Um, so now if, if he admits, you know, he was facing some pressure from people with the Livestrong Foundation to minimize the damage that'll be done to the foundation. Uh, and, and also a lot of his personal finances are, are tied up in things related to that foundation. So maybe he can help himself there if, he, if people view him as redeemed to a certain extent. Um, and then he also wants to get back to competing. He's not the kind of guy who's going to go on a run right. on the weekend for fun. He needs to be timed and beat people and have a number and official records. And this confession won't help that at all. But if after this he goes and collaborates with anti-doping authorities and gives them substantial new information that they didn't already have, maybe he'd be doing triathlons again by the time he's 50. And Jeff Tubin, there's also that issue of proportionality. Certainly, if he admits to this, it's bad, but by the same token, he's done a lot for cancer research, and, and shouldn't that go into the equation in the long run? Well, it does, and, and you know, all of the issues we're dealing with now are really about his reputation, and you know, there, there is no uh, court of reputation in the United States. People are going to make up their own minds about him. I think that it is undoubtedly clear this guy has done a tremendous amount of good uh, in terms of cancer. He has also lied egregiously and bullied and intimidated people who were less powerful than he is. Both of those appear to be true. I don't know how um, to sort that out myself. I think he, he's obviously, it's a complicated equation, but we don't, we don't have the government to do that. We don't have courts to do that. People are going to make up their own minds about uh, about Lance Armstrong, and um, everybody's going to going to go about it differently. And final question, Victor, very quickly. I mean, you've you've been in the middle of it, and you're watching it unfold now. What's your best advice, not only to Lance Armstrong, but to any other athlete out there? You know, I'm now working with a fighter by the name of Nonito Denaire, and he is enrolled in a program called VADA, Voluntary Anti-Doping Association. And he has tested 24-7, 365. 2012, he won Fighter of the Year. So my point is, you can do it clean. You can win without the use of drugs. There is a use or lose mentality that has existed for decades. You need to step up, do it the right way. It can be done. And, and don't make that decision that I made. And we look at this whole series of elite athletes that have all went down. They made bad decisions. It didn't serve them, and it won't serve you. Jeffrey Tubin, David Epstein, Victor Conti, thank you so much for your time. Again, we are still awaiting to hear exactly what comes out of that interview. And if it is possibly Lance Armstrong admitting that he did what he is alleged to have done. Still ahead, exactly one month since the Newtown school tragedy, CNN's Anderson Cooper is there and we'll get an update from him coming up next.